So hey, I'm Gina Smith and I'm a licensed independent social worker in Sumter, South Carolina, and I practice therapy in both Sumter and in Columbia. So I see patients with different kinds of things and I see educators. Um, I've been delighted to see educators, really learned a lot about their life and about their work and about their passion for their work and also the ways in which they've had difficult times and experienced shame. So one person to think about has been an educator for a great number of years and she's in the special ed department and more recently has worked with adult ed students. So this person is a great advocate for those persons. She has a great understanding and respect for them and their, not just their difficulties, but also their um, abilities and their um, possibilities. So however, her administration changed, her director changed, the philosophies changed, budget things began to squeeze other different factors and so she was pretty much squeezed out of her position. Sadly, very sadly. Um, another person that comes to my mind has worked in um, the elementary education department for a great number of years and this person has had her own experience with shame in a personal way. She's had a failed marriage, um, felt badly about some of the choices that she made in that marriage. But she had felt very confident in her job and until COVID and the changes took place and her classroom was doubled and the expectations on her were increased and um, she began to feel overwhelmed and inadequate and um, stress bled into her life in a great number of ways. And a third individual that comes to my mind um, also has been an incredible educator for a number of years. She um, has always been a worker, a worker bee. She would be the person who would say to you that, you know, if there's a job to be done, that she's gonna do it. She wanted to please, she wanted to rise to, I guess you could say, as much level as she can because she cared and because she wanted to do a very good job. She did that, however, um, physical symptoms manifested. She had begun to work so, so hard and um, you could just say she suffers from sort of the never enough syndrome. So these are three persons and you could just say, well, like the way that I've supported them has been obviously for them to find a safe place in therapy, to talk about their experiences, to talk about the feelings, the painful emotions that comes from, again, a desire to want to do a good job, but to some degree in a position that sometimes is relentless and thankless um, and I think all of these people find themselves in positions, again, being their personalities that care and want to do a good job at the same time up against, you know, the pressures that be um, administrations that um, do require performance, the great amount of scrutiny that is upon educators um, and how, and again, that the administrations, you could just say internalize that and then pass it down and those persons take it in and, and feed upon it. Um, and to some degree it's given them great difficulty and made some of them even physically sick. So um, you could just say all of them do need in therapy and I have found able to support them all the things that most of us want. We desire to do a good job. We desire to be included and we desire to feel valued and appreciated for what we do. So all of those persons um, have needed that safe place to kind of reconnect with themselves and not feel badly about the fact that those are things that they need and um, how to handle the fact that, again, they found themselves acting out in ways, you know, to try to take care of those things, but in ways that have, you know, added more to their distress. So, um, a question too that I wanna answer a little bit is just like what advice would I give these people um, and you? I would want both all of you to to be a part of a community where you can feel safe and uh, where you can express your feelings um, where you can not be alone um, Brene Brown one of her quotes is if we can share our experiences with others who can respond with empathy and understanding then shame can't survive and I would encourage you to connect with each other. I think it's the best place and the best gift you have to offer is community. Don't do this job alone. The second thing I would encourage is that you be resilient to shame. 
just because somebody says this is the way it should be done doesn't mean it's the way it should be done and that's hard because again many of us want to do a good job and so we kind of want to you know do the thing that we're told to do but I would just want to encourage you to not stop thinking for yourself not stop looking into what you can do so to take on the criticism when it comes and it's something that it's you can do and you can take it in and decide that there's something you can do to make an attainable positive difference but the rest of it I would just want to encourage you to resist it and think think for yourself um, don't take it on don't take on the toxic unrealistic expectations um, nor let them define you or how you view your success or the success of one of your students you know measures are just measures and tests are just tests and again I realize there's a great deal of pressure but somehow we have to resist that so that you can still see your student and celebrate in those successes that that student makes and in that you make each and every day. You have to kind of be your own best advocate in this job. It's a lonely job. Um, the third thing I would ask is that you believe in yourself and your experience and your own authority because you're that frontline person and in your classroom or with your students and whatever job you're doing, you do know it best. There's a lot of people who can, you know, look at the papers and tell you what, again, might should be. But again, I just want to encourage you to trust in your own experience. If having recess on a rainy day in your classroom, you know, and you notice that your children then are able to, you know, tune in better and perform better and pay better attention as a result, even if the rule book says that that's not what we do, I want to encourage you to do it and advocate for yourself and for the experience that you've seen that it works in your classroom. And so speak up, believe in yourself, believe in your authority and speak up. And then the last thing I'd say is just have the compassion for yourself and the hard job you're doing um, each and every day. Find a way to love yourself and care for yourself for the hard job that you're doing. The one where again, sometimes there's not a lot of obvious affirmations but that you can find a way to give those to yourself on the inside for the small things that you're doing every day that make a difference and um, make our world a better place so thank you for what you do thank you for being there thank you for the job you'll do one day even for my little grandson <laughs> all right i wish you all well